Hello everyone and welcome to the Two Haven't to Rob podcast. My name is Oliver. Today, Robin and I sat down with Kyle. Kyle started their LARP journey in 2022. Kyle is a player in the Nation of Highguard in the Empire LARP system. We discussed the Nation of Highguard. Uh, we also discussed religion uh, in the world of Empire. Uh, we discussed religion just in general in the fantasy settings. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you thumbs up, subscribe. If you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, make sure you give us a nice review and share us around. Now we'll get into the conversation. I hope you enjoy it. Everybody knows where he goes. It's fine. <laughs> if, if they didn't, that would be. <laughs> it's fine. We'll, right, we'll, we'll kick off. We'll, we'll get we'll get started. Kyle, uh, how did you get started out in uh, in LARP? Ah. Uh... Lockdown. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you were the same ilk as us then. You were that kind of uh, two years of just like not doing anything and then went, oh, I'll give this a try. Yeah. So um, I, when I started working in the theatre that I work in now, friends introduced me to D&D. Uh-huh. So I started playing that. It's, it, you know what? Everyone knows this story. It's the same. <laughs> it's the same yeah, story. Really- you get really into telling a story. I became a dungeon master quite quickly because I suddenly realized that I really like world building nice. and yeah. that sort of stuff. Um, and then lockdown happened. Try to do, do try to be a DM online. It's harder than it looks. Uh, yeah, yeah, it can be. Yeah. Harder than it looks. Um, and then, yeah, I started working in a testing center. Mm-hmm. I think that's about the time that I found hefty yeti which is steve who's a server who does okay yeah 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 um sort of very peripherally just sort of went i'll just go in and join their discord see what this is about yeah and the next thing i know i'm obsessively reading through the wiki like it's like my life depended on it like yeah. this this testing center that i worked in initially wasn't very very busy um so i was just sat there literally just scrolling through the wikipedia and reading everything and getting massively obsessed. Yeah. Uh, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, player events are happening now. Better get some kit. <laughs> oh, oh. So <laughs> did, did, did you jump in with like a player event first then before you went to Empire? Yeah. So I was really, really lucky in that regard because the Discord sort of, we developed like a, a friend group in there. Uh-huh. And the f- I think it was the second way house, uh-huh. which happens at Eversley. Right. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, uh, so they sometimes run little sort of events that are empire specific ones. Um, mm. And this is just a social, it's just a nice little casual social. Yeah, Everyone just goes along to it and you just chat. And so that was my first ever LARP experience was at Eversley. And I, I did some things that put me on the map quite quickly. Which oh, were, really? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I argued with the pers- with Pascal, who played our Egregore. Okay. Um, obviously, at the time, not playing their Egregore, because mm-hmm. that's not the role that you play. But obviously, someone who knows Highguard really, really well. Uh-huh. And I just, I had a massive argument with him and the rest of his chapter in uh-huh. the middle of this social, basically being like, you are gross. Uh <laughs> <laughs> and, and basically everyone else like all the Dodish people Wintermark people everyone else just started like gathering around being like who the hell is this person who is what this is going on? and I'm stood there like yelling <laughs> <laughs> yelling at them because they were doing things that I didn't appreciate and uh, yeah so um, was this in was this in like in, like in role play you didn't appreciate yeah, or in role play, it, or... Oh, in role play. Role play. <laughs> role play, yeah. Role play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pascal and me are really good friends we have a great time yeah. uh it like it was purely OC stuff and when we went to an out of character area uh-huh. um, they sort of came up and were just like we've never met you before. Like, this is amazing. Like, this has been really good fun. And I was like, this is my first ever LARP experience. They're like, you're lying. <laughs> so did did you just go, did you go into that completely solo then? Yeah, pretty much. Wow, I, yeah. I had, I had friends, like people that I knew from a Discord, but yeah. I'd never met them before, really. No, I no. Just, I just went. I was picked up by um, a person that has LARPed for many, many years. 
um and they just came along to the train station were like yeah i can pick you up i was like thank you so much <laughs> i don't know how to get to ever sleep never been there before yeah how have you found the larp community i'm pretty sure you've got the same opinion as we do yeah. it seems very welcoming to new people yeah massively welcoming to new people um i think the biggest thing for me is that the community is so diverse in terms of like gender expression yeah that yeah. i've not really come across it like that and i work in theater like mm. <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah um so in terms of that really 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 diverse and it's kind of broadened my my mentality and my thinking which has been brilliant and then yeah. also on top of that like every kind of every situation that i found myself in where i've needed help or advice or whatever the larp community has been super solid and just sort of yeah. being like this is what i would do or this is what i'm thinking of or just a hey do you need a hug <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. As you say, and, and diversity is a good word because it's not just like obviously, like you say, gender expression, but just diversity in the different people in different walks of life and life experiences. You know, uh, it seems to be you just get everyone from every walk of life doing this, not just the uh, what you might have had in your head going in, being like, oh yeah, LARP is all just you know these the, the type that are portrayed in the media yeah. anyway. <laughs> yeah, but badly portrayed in the media. Yeah, like, like you say, it's just yeah. so there's so many different people from so many different backgrounds and so many different skills all together in this one hobby. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just it's, it's so it's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So you you said you so you work so you work in theaters. I'm assuming you you uh, act and things like that. Is that was that something that uh kind of pulled you towards live action role playing that is it was the role play side of it that teased out yeah so like um my my sort of theater background is i trained as an actor ori mm -hmm. originally then i went to university instead of a drama school mm -hmm. um and i realized very quickly wow there's lots of people here who are passionate about acting and very good at it and i am not as passionate <laughs> um so um and I, I again, it's that's I think it's that situation with Dungeons and Dragons. It's very similar. I started to become this person that was like, yeah, but I feel like you know we can pull something out more here, or we can do X Y Z. So I ended up becoming the director instead. Uh, <laughs> so, yes. so my my sort of theater world is is more directing, and mm -hmm. then my actual day to day job is I work as a creative learning officer. Okay. Um, wow. So all of that fun stuff. Um, but yes. The bread and butter of the theater world is is um I mean role play is just basically improv. Yeah. But that's that's what it is. And the bread and butter of the acting world is improv. But what I like about role playing in LARP is that we get rid of that trope of yes and because sometimes it's no but. Oh right, okay, sense. interesting, okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, not... can you unpack that a little bit more? That, that's actually yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, for example, my character is not someone that everyone will agree with. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> he is a little bit uh, controversial in some mm -hmm. regards. Yeah. Um, and some people will come at my character purely for those reasons, purely for the controversial reasons, and yeah. that's fine. But what's interesting is that it's not a yes and situation because I don't agree with them or they okay. don't agree with me. So what it is instead is it's a no but. It's a okay. So for example, let's 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 just get it out there and open. Uh, Silas <laughs> is a little bit lineageist. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Silas f believes that um, you know we're all human, mm -hmm. but some of us have a connection with the re magical realms that is not healthy. Mm -hmm. Is it useful at times? Yes. But we need to be cautious about it. We have mm -hmm. evidence in the past that people have fallen to the realms, etc. So he's very firmly sort of like, just be careful with it. Uh -huh. Just be careful. Um, and that can sometimes come across in the way that he will sometimes say to a mage, say, for example, they are a briar yeah they yeah. want to get involved in spring magic silas would go that's a bad idea you should maybe go for a different magical realm because that one's way too close to the bark on your face yes um and so briars might come up to me and will be like well i don't think that's right i think you're attacking my pride mm -hmm. 
right? So mm-hmm. that's obviously a big virtue of ours. That is a very important one. Um, and if someone says to you that that you're attacking their pride, that's a religious confrontation. Yeah. Um, in this in our world mm-hmm. uh, of empire, uh, and so me, I can't just go yes, I agree with you, and I have to say, no, I don't agree with you, right, but yeah. here's something else to carry the conversation on. Yeah. So, for example, ah, yeah. I would say, for example, no, you're wrong. Mm-hmm. Briar should not be getting involved with spring magic because we know about what's happening with X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. But as a priest, you need to do what you feel is right, but here's the cautionary tales. Here's the lessons that we've learned. Yeah. Be smart about this. Uh, meanwhile, in my notebook, I'll be going, ah, ah, this person is da 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 da. Keep an eye on them. <laughs> <Keep> them. <laughs> Doing X, Y, Z. I love it. I love it. So yeah, it's 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 interesting because in improv, you tell people, yes, yes, and yes, and yes, yeah. and. Oh, also, yeah, in improv, there's a, there's obviously you have the obligation to keep it going because yeah. like, that's the exercise, isn't it? It's like we've got, but in in LARP and role play, yeah, it's like it is. It is improv, but there's no no one's under any obligation to to keep it going. You can just be like, yeah, I don't like this bit of game. I'm going to walk away from it. You know, hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. Yeah, I yeah, and I I think it's also important to say like the the lineage side of the game, especially those people that would carry Silas's opinion. Um, the people that I interact with and the people I role play with are very very careful about how they role play that yeah. because some people yeah. do not want to interact with that part of the game and that is no. totally legitimate and absolutely fine if a character comes up to me and it's it's very clear that they are not wanting to engage with that part i don't force that on anyone yeah that's good but for some other people yeah they love that game because they love proving me wrong which is absolutely legitimate i don't play to win quote unquote yeah Um, i'm very much happy to be (laughs) i'm very much happy to be proven wrong several times a day it's fun (laughs) hey i'm pretty sure our changeling rage has you know saved the empire a few times yeah yeah yeah. it's changing rage but but it's cool that that piece of game that is not just like advertised on the wiki because you just go oh should I be lineage or uh, yeah and it kind of just puts it forward as if you want to look like an elf you, you can yes. and it's like oh cool I'll do that and then it wasn't until uh and I, I I read the brief and I was like oh yeah that that kind of that that speaks to me the changeling brief but it wasn't until we like e2 and then it was I realized that there was like a role play effect like it with the miasma and things like that then I start then it started affecting my game and it's it's interesting to uh it's interesting to have that that side of the game that you can go and explore but yeah like from what you're saying there it's not as if we've gone in as changelings and all of a sudden you've got players going oh we don't agree with changelings the, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah the no. system is so <laughs> much deeper than that isn't it because there's, there's a few other the one i bring up a lot is uh like mob mentality and uh obviously because the the whole the whole system is based around having distinct groups and people pigeonholing themselves into those distinct groups and you, it, it's a real cool thing to play with, but you've got to be, I imagine, you've just got to be careful with it. Like you say, like with the, you know, lineage thing, if you're anti-lineage. Um, I think slavery is another one as well, because slavery is a big theme in the, in the game. Uh, and some people really want to interact with that part of the game. And other people are like, no, I don't really, I don't really want to, <laughs> I, I don't really want to discuss that. That's the yeah. cool part of it, I find. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, that's, I, again, I, <sighs> characters that i'd like to play things that i like to do i like to be morally gray when it comes to the characters that i play Mm -hmm. um because i find those characters more interesting to interact with my whole my whole shtick with anything that i do and again i think this is coming from being a dungeon master is i want the people around me to walk away and go I had fun. Like, yeah. even if they're yeah. walking away and going, Silas is the worst person I've ever met. Yeah. That's a story still, and that's great. What I don't want is people to walk away from me and go, Kyle's a, the worst person. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's about creating that space and that fun. And if people want to interact with me for those reasons, I'm all for it. Yeah. If they don't want to, I've got other things to play around with. Exactly. Can... The, the, I mean, that's the good thing about the the that the system is that there's thousands of people on the field. You know, there's there's people that will be interested in your game. And if you're not interested in someone's game, you can walk away. There's also a massive scope for checking in. You know, I mean, yeah. people who maybe oh, don't yeah. play 
maybe don't play D and D and are new to LARP. Uh, it might be a bit a little bit alien, but you know, you you can. Uh, I, I think advice I would give is just it, use the new player thing of like I'm new to Amble. Yeah. Uh, just just to because I have been in situations where I've been with someone who's new and they you know the role play is heavy and they've said oh. I'm new and then everything kind of everything's just toned down yeah. slightly just in case everything gets a little bit a little bit much yeah. it can be a lot for somebody who is not used to um games such as Dungeons and Dragons or not used to that sort of type of role play it can be a lot all at once and it can it can you know you do you, you need that you know opportunity to check in but what I've experienced and I'm uh, I don't know if it's the same for for the for the both of you is that everybody within the community like you said they're just so inviting to that they want to encourage the role play but they want to encourage role play that everyone is enjoying and having fun with just like a, a dungeon master <laughs> yeah it's not always obvious either you know that's the thing so sometimes you know you can be like oh i think i think this 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 person is having fun or this is how i'm playing my character you know i'm, I'm playing you know, I'm playing a, 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 a Dornish himbo and he's going to rub orcs up the wrong way. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, it yeah. might not be apparent to the orcs that I'm enjoying that type of role play. And I've, I've had I had one orc player reach out to me uh, amazingly, like uh, like in between events being like, oh, I really enjoyed this piece of role play here. And they just asked, you know, do you want more of that or do, do you want? And I'm like, that is, that is such a good player to, to, to yeah. do that. <laughs> <laughs> because that's so easy to do like we we're all findable online right and you just go and be like hey you know you know this interaction we had do you, do you want to keep exploring that you know or do you want to do you want to steer away from it you know easy as yeah 100 percent. and i think also me playing high guard it's kind of a big flag for most people to go are you okay with conflict <laughs> um, which uh yeah yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. And, and what's, what's fun is that, yeah, like I said, my first ever LARP experience, I was arguing with other Highborn players who all came from Jashin's Legacy, um, and I was very, very fortunate that those players, and also, um, Scarlet, who plays Brother Luke, mm -hmm. I was very, very fortunate that those players are a very, very experienced, um, but also B, they're also just the most like rewarding people to sort of interact with. Mm -hmm. They were very, very careful um, with me after realizing because I because I launched, like I said, I launched into that argument, which was basically about the practice of unveiling, which we can get into, um, okay. and also our opinions on that, and then mm -hmm. also a situation that had happened in High Guard out of play for me i wasn't involved in it because okay. it was something that happened in the past but it was a player created event that is quite important for us because it has a lot of ripples mm -hmm. and causes us to be hated by the league for a while um so you know these were things that i was reacting to from information that i'd gained from the wiki yeah. i walked into a field i went ballistic because i saw it happening in front of my face um a very very intense conversation happened um lots of highborn all surrounding each other on a bar with their hoods raised which tells everybody some serious stuff is going down um and then some insults were exchanged which led to me crying which was amazing it was yeah, amazing yeah. Role play. <laughs> i was like i was sitting there in the corner i sit in the corner with scarlet who's playing brother luke brother luke's crying i'm crying we're holding yeah. each other and then Scarlet, being the great player that she was, she was like, "I'm. A, I've just been made aware that this is this is your this is your first LARP. Like, do you want to step to the side for a second? And I was like, "I would really appreciate that." Yeah, she took me to cool. the side, yeah. and then everyone else that had been arguing with me from Jashin's legacy, they came over and they were like, "Are we OC?" And I said, "Yeah, just to have a bit of a break." And they were like, "Absolutely. Are you cool? Is everything okay? Oh, that's great. How yeah. are we doing?" That's and I was great. like, "Yeah, we're all great." And then that's when Scarlet was like, "This is his first ever LARP thing," and they were like, "You're lying." <laughs> um, <laughs> what so, an amazing first impression to make on everybody. Though that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, I still blush about it quite a lot because. Um, Obviously, Pascal was my egregore for a while. He's now, sadly, no longer the egregore and has no. moved to Barushka. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but he he has had a... He's been a really, really monumental force. And like we said with the new player stuff, egregores, 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 egregores. Use them. They yeah. are 
amazing people. Their entire game is to help you find yours. And if you're in the field and you're like, I've been doing nothing for an hour, I'm getting bored, I don't know where to start, ask someone where your egregore is, find them, and they will they will literally yeet you into some game because yeah, they just find shuck it you. For you. I, I imagine <laughs> yeah, I imagine that that's more important a piece of advice for a solo player as well. Someone who's 100%. Someone who's coming on the right. Yeah, I have, I have massive. I mean, because obviously we we came in just just the two of us, but it, and it was it was it was overwhelming at times, even just for the two of us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because oh, yeah. it's it's a lot. I mean, if if I were to go back again, I don't know if I I, I think I feel like if we go back again, I probably would have done like a player event first, or something smaller that was just maybe like a day or something, mm -hmm. and then head into the weekend because that that weekend was just a lot, and it was like you had to because we didn't actually experience a lot of E one because we were constantly going back to the tent to just be like, well, we're cold. <laughs> that, that, did, <laughs> that, that, that didn't help. Uh, yeah. But also, yeah, just to be like just processing everything and just be like, we're out. Stuff was happening. We're like, oh god, we're tired. And then and then you, you go back to the tent. You're like, are we missing out? Because there's so much going on, isn't there? <laughs> why oh, why are there dead spirits running through the field? What's going on? What yeah. was that? Yeah. <laughs> I was so confused. The, I was in the center of that mess. Oh, and that really? was oh, the our main line as well. Yeah. Um, oh wow. Yeah. So. Like, I think one thing that I will say is that even though I'd be, I think I went to four player events before I went. Oh, to, wow. You went to a few well, then. Nice. I yeah. went to a few. I was very, very fortunate that um, a couple of those were close by. I was very fortunate yeah. that the people who were running them were people who I'd connected with. Yeah. So I was very, very, very lucky. And I'm very uh, privileged in that mm -hmm. regard as a new player for, for, yeah. for Empire. Because walking into it, a lot of people were just like, yeah, you're not a new player. You're just new to like, empire as a new thing. to the actual empire thing yeah. yeah yeah but what was really important was um steve took me aside in a conversation that we had uh where he was just like listen i know you've been to player events and i know people are saying that you're not necessarily a new player anymore he was like but empire is a totally different kettle of fish mm -hmm. he was like it is it is an experience you can't quite describe and until you're there you don't really know how you're going to react and he was like but yeah. what i will say is if at any point you start to feel overwhelmed that's okay it's totally yeah. normal especially for your first ever time so for me to you guys like the fact that you just rocked up at you one was like hey this is our first ever like empire experience like hats off to you because that was not an easy event like yeah. it was it yeah. was heavy yeah we went in blind as well like we we were to so yeah i got a, very a, blind yeah I, I i went in and went they had a jet like a, a election for the generalship and i was just like yeah whatever because i'm a type of person i was like, i'll give it a go um i had no I, I had no idea what the name of our armies were i have no, I had no idea what virtues were they were asking me about yeah what virtue i was like i was like yeah i just made up stuff i was just like yeah yeah well but then it was it was a learning process and then I went off to like military council and, and everything and it was like it was really fun but it was a lot like it was <laughs> it was a lot to take in i was like whoa this is crazy i thought these people hadn't been playing this game for two years and it's just like everyone's just go and it's intense it's like it's yeah. yeah yeah it's amazing what what drew you to uh high guard uh initially uh because I'm a massive Lord of the Rings fan and High Guard's aesthetic reminds me of old sort of Gondor, sort of ancient Gondorian style. Yeah. We've certainly seen that uh, replicated in the Rings of Power series, mm -hmm. uh, where literally they go into that old ancient city and I literally was like, kit inspiration everywhere. Oh my God, I want all of it. Um <laughs> Yeah, I saw, so I saw the initial image of High Guard and I was like, that's cool. Then I read a little bit of the wiki about High Guard and it was like, oh, I get to be confident purely because I'm highborn. Great. <laughs> Great, yeah. Uh, I get to walk into a room and go, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, great. That's a great starting point for a new player, I feel. Um <laughs> And then just like reading, I'm a massive history buff. I love uh -huh. history. I yeah. enjoy history a great deal. The part that made me go, this will be interesting for me to play it, is reading that our archivists like to burn history that is unvirtuous. 
oh, uh, that we think other people shouldn't read because it's yeah. dangerous. Yeah. Um, OC, I disagree with that. <laughs> well, well, yeah. <laughs> I do not agree yeah. with that at all. Yeah. Yeah. In character, I was like, how am I going to brain flip this in my head so that when I'm arguing with someone who I totally agree with, <laughs> I can roleplay that. So I was like, give myself a bit of a challenge there. Mm -hmm. And then this other situation for me as well is kind of seeing ourselves as like the elder sibling to everybody else. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's that's how I would describe it is when I was reading it, I was like, they're like the elder elder sibling. I'm an only child. I've never had siblings before. So I was like, this could be quite fun. Um, that's, that's quite cool that you've picked up those things that you've gone, right, okay, I want to play with that specifically in a sense of role play because I don't, I don't know the other side. So like you mentioned about, uh, you mentioned about like burning books. Like for me, um, we'll get, we'll talk about religion in a bit because I know you're into that side of the game, but uh, so for so for me, like I'm, uh, I was raised, I was raised, raised religious. Um, I'm now uh, an, an atheist, but every single one of my uh, RPG characters are usually paladins, and if they're not, they still have religion. Uh, it's it's a good, it's a good way of putting yourself into into a, into another perspective, and I I enjoy, I really do enjoy that space. Um, mm -hmm. It can be a little bit more extreme if you're doing it in because you said before that you like characters that are. That are more gray around gray areas mm -hmm. do, do you find that's a big difference in D, D as opposed to larp because i tend to find that because i find that D, D characters are way more fun to play black and white yeah so with D, &D the grayness of it is being contradictory to your own stuff so having yeah. having flaws in yeah. yourself i like giving gifts like that to the mm -hmm. players that i'm playing with yeah. in that it's like i've just said something highly highly like you know contradictory to what i said at the beginning so mm -hmm. like you know i'm being hypocritical yeah. <laughs> yes. um, you know go for it um so with D, &D i think there's there's that part of it i think with D, &D though as well is that there's you don't necessarily have to have hard skills as we mm -hmm. call them art skills uh because you've got a dice roll that yeah. you know i could stand up in front of a whole bunch of people and play the loot in D. &D. yeah not gonna do that here uh because i yeah. cannot <laughs> nope definitely not going to happen in, yeah. in in lark um so i have to rely on my hard skills and i know that one of my hard skills is i am a very good orator i'm very good at conversation and debate i'm very mm -hmm. good at um and i remember what people say for a very very long time and that has become very, very useful because I've been able to stick the knife in a couple of times with a few people. Um, and so that moral, I mean, if anyone thinks that the Empire is morally good, um, I would be questioning their judgment a little yeah. bit. Um, <laughs> the Empire is not particularly great. Yeah. Um, so, you know, <laughs> being morally grey within the Empire setting, I don't think is necessarily revolutionary by any no. means. No. But I think having those having those anchor points, as I like to call them, of yeah. where my opinions are, helps me portray the character in a way that's fun for other people to engage with because yeah. they can agree or disagree or whatever that may be. Yeah, do you, well, do you, do you find do you find that high guard is giving you that type of thing? So when, when I think it's funny because you were you were talking about like the, the burning of the books and the aesthetic because some people have like compared. I think because Dawn is on the edge of the Barrens, things like that people. Go, oh yeah, it's a bit like Gondor. I'm like that doesn't give me it, it, Dawn doesn't really give me Dawn, Gondor vibes but it's funny you saying that because High Guard actually does give me yeah. uh, that type of like old Numenorean thing but they 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 the, the feel that I get is like the Chantry from Dragon Age uh yeah. dragon age inquisition and things like that yeah. um it, yeah that's that's the that's the kind of the feel I get uh yeah. but with that because obviously that that's very tied to the religion of that world is high guard is is it very tied to the way more so than any other nation yes yeah oh, so it is so it is what it is, it is what it seems yeah let's <laughs> yeah yeah um so the way that the structure of high guard works is that mm -hmm. family bloodline family doesn't matter 
it is your opinion on virtue that matters. Oh. So your oh. chapter could be entirely non-related to each other. It is the core of the chapter's ideals that binds you together. Okay. That's what makes your chapter. Mm -hmm. So it is not unusual for a child to go through military service, which Highgard has. Highgard is a very militaristic um religious mm -hmm. nation yeah go cool figure um and so you go through your military service and then after you do the military service you come back and that's when you really know yourself so you choose your chapter oh. um chapters it doesn't mean that there aren't families within chapters that's also completely fine but to us bloodline doesn't matter it is our virtue that drives us mm -hmm. everything we do we do for virtue's sake um and the empire's sake um we see ourselves as absolutely stalwart stalwart in that ideal ideology um and i think that's where the sort of like i mentioned before the sort of sibling idea comes from in that we sort of go okay you've you've tried and that's good that's really good what we're going to do now is we're going to come in and we're going to fix it for you yeah um and you know that's <laughs> horrific but it's it's such a fun thing to do because it drives people up the wall yeah for example the marchers uh -huh. they do not like being told that they've tried <laughs> and then we're going <laughs> to fix it for them does it work um and you know and also on top of that like an elder sibling as well mm -hmm. when we break something and we've done something bad we automatically go i understand you're angry i understand you're mad at us <laughs> but what we did it for was we did it because we thought it was the best now we've learned that it's not and we're sorry but our intention was good <laughs> you can yeah you can divert it to the Divert it to the higher power, which is, is yeah. What what do you think of the um? What do you think of the act? Because the religion itself is quite unique in a system because there's no there's no like deity, is there? Yep. I, I I I personally like it a lot. What do you? Yeah. What, is is that is is the actual construct of the religion something that again drew you to High Guard as well? Absolutely. I. Yeah, I basically looked at the High Guard brief and went, how can I be the most highborn character possible? So I play yes. a priest. I yes. play a priest. Um, and yeah, the religious game is, as a as a dungeon, with my dungeon master head on, mm -hmm. it's such a great inbuilt system to encourage players to play. Yeah. Because we all know people that want to be the strider in the room that sits in the corner with the hood up and just, you know, sits there and waits for somebody to come across them. Yeah. That's yeah. fine in certain LARPs. In some smaller game LARPs, that's okay. That's yeah. that's fine. In a field with 3,000 people where we're all trying to speak to different people and get things moving, we don't have time to come and speak to the person in the corner that doesn't, want, doesn't look as though they want to be interacted with. No. So the religion side of the game is really, like, ambition for example mm -hmm. we have an entire sect of the religion that is literally go do the thing if you want to own the world own it figure out how it's going to happen and just do it go 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 um and then you have wisdom which is my sect of the religion mm -hmm. which a lot of people will say oh it's the old man in the corner with the, all the library books and stuff like that yeah. no wisdom is do it and l figure out the lesson do it and find out the lesson. If you oh. survive, you oh, come this... back and you go, yeah, that wasn't a great idea. Yeah. Um, it all kind of went a bit wrong. But the majority of us survived. The rest of us are going through the labyrinth for a quick clean and then they'll come back in about 200 yeah. years. It'll be fine. Oh. Yeah, so it's, honestly. It's, it's driving people yeah. to do something. Oh, we yeah. Have... You, you're giving me chills just like even just, even <laughs> just, even just a bit because you, you, you've gone about, you're going about wisdom because I, I had no... I wasn't really. I didn't really go in with the the uh, wanting to interact with the religion game at all. Course, um, yeah. it, it, no, but it kind of just it it appears like it appears in places. Yeah. So at first, I'm like, right, I'm going to be playing my you know. Uh, basically, I play my D and D character, but he's just less. We talked about black and white earlier, but he's he's but he's very gun ho. He just wants to be. He just wants to be glorious. And at first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the, at the at the beginning of the year, people were like, "Oh yeah, you know what? What could he be interested?" in? I was like, I didn't remember really thought about. It. I thought maybe like courage 
or ambition, you know, um, and s somehow over the course of our test of metal, um, I was learning these lessons. So I actually learned because we, we were going around collecting stories of true love. Um, and I was actually speaking, yeah, <laughs> I was, I was, I was speaking to, uh, yeah, I was, I was speaking to a troubadour and I had kind of realized, I thought, oh, I knew what true love was. And then it came to this realization that I was, you know, when I started learning these stories of true love, I realized that they had a beginning, they had a middle and they had an end and they're all going to end. And it's, and I was, Godric was learning this lesson about love and everyone's like, well, that's, you're showing your wisdom. And then I kept coming up against wisdom. And it's funny you said that about wisdom, because that's why is because I was actually learning a lesson. It's just yeah. it's such a cool part of the game, isn't it? Yeah, I've a lot of my friends have gotten somewhat frustrated at me because I'm slowly recruiting them all into wisdom. Yes. <laughs> Very slowly. Ah, um, but yeah, the religious side of the game is 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 one of my favorites. Um and I I literally dived into it with both feet uh right from right from the off. Um and it's been a it's been so fun especially because a lot of the priest players see themselves as kind of like egregore adjacents yeah. in that the whole like we said before egregores are there to encourage new players well priests are kind of like your older players sort of revampers we walk into a new player like an older player who's sat there going oh i could either go for general or i could go for senator i don't know which one i want a priest can be the person that they call in and the priest walks in and goes, right, so what's your ambition? This is what my ambition is. Okay, but what lessons have you learned? Well, I've learned that combat-wise, I am good, but I'm far better at X, Y, Z for senatorship. Okay, so maybe the lessons and your wisdom is showing that actually senators where you should be going because that is the best ambition for you and that is what wisdom has shown you previously. Um and because they're actual, they're actual virtues that human beings, out of character, hold as well. You're not, you're not, uh, you're not, in, you're not in enforcing some kind of like, oh well, I think this uh, dragon deity wants you to do this because it likes this. It's like, well, <laughs> you know, what is your ambition? What's your ambition? You know, what, what's your, what's your pro? You know, what you're proud of? And it's, and it's, this is, yeah, this is something that everybody's creating for themselves as well. That like you like 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 you you said that you end up stumbling upon a certain path and then. It's just it's, it seems to just sort of come out and get you. And every single time um, we've had a conversation with a priest sort of player, it has just been like, "Wow, I didn't know that about myself." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're also somewhat, now I know um, your game. <laughs> yeah, we're therapists for pl for players' characters, and that can get dangerous really quick. <laughs> yeah, so people might be put off by the fact that it's like, right, okay, there's there's one religion. And really, you know, you can't, especially you can't outwardly be against it. It's like it's the same way you just can't, you have to be an imperial. Uh, people hearing that about a system might be like, oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But honestly, you like we came into the game, uh, Robin, actually, you, you you don't touch religion, even D&D &D or anything, do you? You're just, it's yeah. not something that interests you at all. Uh, yeah. But you, you head into this game and if you don't, it, it does not, even though there are like nations like High Guard that will, you know, they're, they're very... Uh, you know the the like this pillar of the way. It's not as if that's like all your game. Someone's not going to come up to you as soon as you start playing and be like, "Have you heard about the way?" The good news about the way. It doesn't happen. But if you go looking for it, it's all there. Yeah, yeah. And it, like again, there are areas of high guard that are. We all have different things that we want to play. Yes, a lot of the players in high like if you say that you're highborn, a lot of people assume that you're a priest. It, it is the way that it is. Yeah, I, yeah, I do. <laughs> but there are players, yeah. but but there are players that are highborn who are not priests. They are warriors only, or they are benefactors, which is the um, economy play, uh, based player archetype. Right. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. And like the benefactors council is one of the most powerful sort of. I may get some backs up here by saying this, but they're one of the most powerful sort of sections of the economy game. Um, so much so that we've had senators of other nations say, I'm jealous of your senators because you, as long as you prove that the thing that the senator wants is virtuous, that council can move hell or high water and pay for it. I think in the most recent E4, uh, at E3, 
that benefactors council paid for five rods of uh in, imperial rods of mastery which right, are the okay. most insane imperial basically every spell that you can do that you can do with mana cost etc this rod can do if you as if you knew it so in Correct. battle you can cast paralyze um shatter uh entangle venom basically all of your battle spells it helps you achieve and the reason why we did that was because the senators and the generals walked into that council and said, we are sick to death of Urizen being yay and then nay, yay and nay, yay and nay, yay and nay, with us winning and then having to withdraw, winning and having to withdraw. We've got the Druge on the back foot. We know that at the next event, at the next summit, we're going to go into uh, Zenith and have a huge fight. We need this. We need this um because we're doing this and it mm -hmm. needs to get done um and basically we said that it is our ambition it is our wisdom it is all of these different um areas or paths of the way that have congregated into this situation that we're now facing we need the money to fund this and the benefactor council was like all right let's let's do it and they paid for five of them i, I don't know i'd have to look up how much how expensive they are but i know that they are it, seriously expensive oh my it would probably it would probably go way over my head anyway <laughs> that, that, that yeah, type of it, thing yeah and so like you know yes they are highborn players but the way that they sort of internalize the religious side of the game is they go okay prove to me why i should spend this money mm -hmm. And so you just have to be like, well, I'm ambitious. This is the reasons and the paths of ambition that I wish to pursue. And that's why I want to build this library. Mm -hmm. And then they decide whether that's good enough or not. And that's that's fine. So, you know, you don't have to be a priest to walk in and justify that. Area yeah. Of the game. yeah, which is, which is good because then you don't have to like, oh, you, you, don't, you don't have to be like, right, I want to focus... You know, what's my character going to do? My first ever character. It's good because like in from a combat point of view... Anyone can use one-handed weapon. Anyone can go out and use combat. Anyone can put armor on. I think it's really good to have that in the other parts of the game as well. Like you don't have to have some sort of skill to go and be a senator, politician. You don't have to have a skill to take part in the way, you know. And then if you want to follow that route, then you can you can head down head down that way. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, I had a very very like, I had a solid idea of what kind of priest Silas was going to be. Mm -hmm. um but i've naturally fallen into a different line that i didn't expect him to go down mm -hmm. um which has led him to becoming a darker and darker soul uh and that's <laughs> funny because i thought he was already pretty pretty dark uh going into the game and now it's, it's got worse <laughs> yeah. which is <laughs> So, 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 what kind, what kind of game is your is your week? Because that's the thing we are. So we because we have like obviously we have priests in in dawn, but like our troubadours are they're all yeah that's right yeah the, the troubadours are all priests so they're like they're yeah. like bards but they're also they're also priests you know so they do a lot of singing and 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 uh, act, you know acting and and whatnot but then they're also part of the part of the, the virtue you know, yeah. kind of game so what we see the like the troubadour style game what what because it sounds quite it sounds quite political driven in a high guard to be in yeah. a, a priest yeah massively so so i think in dawn if you're a noble, you get to vote on things. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. Yeah. So your your folk can't vote, for example. Yeah, they they have their own. They have their own. They have their own thing. <laughs> I, I I won now, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we could. You can see my bias coming out already as a high yeah. board. Um, with with um, leave, shall I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the grown ups are talking. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm totally joking. Um, so with High Guard, it's the priests. The priests are the ones who vote uh, mm -hmm. on who our senators will be, uh, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So politically speaking, it is the priests that hold the power. And actually, um, there are some people who take uh, a congregation on purely for the political aspect of high guard they have no interest in the religious side of the game they take on um, a congregation because they want to be able to influence the political spheres within high guard and that's that's <laughs> fine that's that's how it's built that's uh, the structure that it it's is. it's a yeah w yeah without yeah it's it's yeah, something that a fantasy religion should be as well <laughs> you know yeah. it is yeah. 
yeah it is it, it's an institution right so yeah. it's it, there's going to be people going in buying for yeah buying for power for that reason you know 100%. yeah and that's um, absolutely that, that's built in the, into the game deliberately to cause conflict because yeah. Yeah. why not <laughs> that's what we're here for yeah. it's not necessarily yeah. fighting and, and cutting each other with the uh, fake foam swords it's <laughs> me pointing at someone across the room and just going you're only here to vote in a general not to discuss things about Urizen that's that's entirely on you um so it's very politically focused our yeah. national assembly is basically like our politicians meeting uh -huh. to discuss what's going to happen um and it's such a political force that we we've had other nations visit us during the national assembly to ask for help or whatever it is that they want from us mm -hmm. they come to our national assembly because they know high guards direction is dictated by that national assembly by the right. by the synod um highborn assembly um so yeah it's it's massively political um and my character when they came in was going to be a political priest so mm -hmm. i was going to so for example we don't have a throne right now I knew that that's quite hot game. So I thought my character was going to come in and basically be like, the Synod needs more jurisdiction in the decision of who the throne is. That's a controversial opinion because some people don't think that should be the case at all. Okay. But, um, but and, and I did stick my oar in immediately with with the game of that because I walked into, you know, um, a player event where a throne candidate was there. And I made it quite clear that uh, we had a sort of uh, the, this player event, which was in a castle in Scotland. It was mm -hmm. gorgeous. Um, we all sat in the main sort of um, fire room hallway. Uh -huh. and it was just yeah. priests. It was just us priests. And it was a Dawnish event. So that was fun for me because I loudly said at dinner time that I didn't believe in true love. Uh so yeah that'll, that'll yeah. get you in yeah <laughs> yeah mind you yeah. i've heard i've heard that so many times so it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Heard it so everyone many says times. it this is actually a trap we're just about to teach you about true love now <laughs> no get me out uh, <laughs> uh, but what was funny is that the the conversation of the throne came up and it was just synod priests in here so there was troubadours there was wintermark crows there was all of sort of above were in there and my first ever sort of time really addressing a wider sort of synod represent representation mm -hmm. uh, because there were gatekeepers there and there were cardinals also present and i just stepped forward and i just basically <laughs> with my hood raised because that's what we do in high guard when we're talking about <laughs> virtuous things um and i said out loud i just went i do not care for throne candidates who simply say they're going to make us all best friends that's never going to happen i want a throne that's going to step forward and say this is what i'm going to do this is what i want with that power not i want the throne but i want the throne because don't come to me and say as a throne candidate you should vote for me because i've wanted the throne for years because that doesn't fly no. um and everyone in the room applauded and was like that's exactly what we want and oh, so amazing. since then i sort of thought originally right i'm going to be this political priest that's going to step into the senate or step up to senators uh, and be like the synod has to say it wants this or whatever yeah. i ended up hitting the field at e1 with a whole bunch of information about um blasphemers and heretics and i false idolizers so I basically walked into the game and was like, cool, there's a whole bunch of people that need to be um, executed. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> um, and so I assisted in the execution of one well-known player uh, mm -hmm. who, who OC um, later on basically was like, I wanted this ending for this character anyway. Um, yeah. But yeah. you helped, which was great. Um, and then at my second event, I uncovered another uh, well-known practicing uh, blasphemer. Uh, and at E3, even though I wasn't at E3, I sent a letter to the Inquisitor who was inquisiting them with all the evidence they would ever need to have that person executed. That person was executed at E3. Um, and then at E4, uh, I, <laughs> at E4, I just basically went, 
I'm an inquisitor, really, aren't I? Um, you are. So uh, <laughs> at E1, I am canvassing and stepping forward as a possible candidate for the wisdom inquisitor. Um, wow. Is the position oh, wow. that okay. I'm going for. Um, wow. Yeah, it's it got quite dark quite quickly because I now have information which I can't tell anyone about because there are people in the game who've been playing, um, you know, cultists mm -hmm. for a while and have got very good at making sure that people that find out go quiet. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's interesting. Well, I'll tell you what, do, do you want to have I'm a little... Scared. Yeah, do, do you, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll come back and we'll talk about, uh, we'll about Inquisition. Do you want to have a little, uh, little break? We have a little toilet break, go grab a drink. Uh, yeah, yeah, cool. little, little, little two three minutes and we, yeah we'll we'll come back and we'll talk about inquisitions because that's getting juicy i still have chair envy so <laughs> <laughs> i was like checking it out whenever you were moving i was like it's a really nice chair it came with it came with the house the landlord let us keep it it's one of theirs and they were just like we were going to chuck it in the bin and i was like you are not <laughs> um, I'm keeping this. is this the armchair is it <laughs> yeah it's the armchair <laughs> nice. i need to get like... a smoking jacket for it i don't smoke but <laughs> <laughs> I know I've, I've often thought that I was like I don't I don't, I don't have any uh, uh, gumption to smoke, but it, it'd be cool to just sit and, <laughs> and have a have a cigar jacket. <laughs> a cigar jacket. I mean, like that. That's just like that. That's that's a chair that yeah needs accessories. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just like... I think so. It's normally where my cat sleeps because she deserves a throne, to be quite frank. Um, but yeah, I use it for whenever I'm DMing or whenever I'm doing sort of role playing stuff because. I think it fits. You should bring it to bring it to Anvil and just park oh, it. Yeah, park. I should just I should learn to drive, get a van, bring it to the. <laughs> hey, well, uh, well, you know what? I when we first uh, when we first started, I thought, well, because I've got a little caddy van, and I was like, oh yeah, we we'll, we'll be fine. We'll have all our stuff on it by E four. We were cramming stuff into we it. Need like, a bigger one. <laughs> yeah. We needed. Yeah, we already a key, a key skill for LARPers, Tetris. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. That's the the funny thing about ours is that it goes in differently every single time as well. <laughs> it just like <laughs> we took less stuff from E three to E four, and I'm like, how do we have less space? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't somehow tighter. <laughs> <laughs> so the so the uh, the Inquisitions because this is a this is a, a real uh, something that I did want to really kind of del delve into because sure. uh, one of the real cool things about that I experience with high guard i didn't have that much interaction with high guard at all last year really um but uh just hanging out in dawn i think it was the e2 or something uh there was yeah a load of highborn doing something and they was they were sat down with someone i think it was one of our generals and it was like oh what's going on over there and they're like it's an inquisition and i was like it's it's a what there's an there's inquisitions in this world <laughs> that was <laughs> that was really cool so is there is there literally enough because uh, it's not as if it doesn't seem to be happening all the time but is there enough game uh, there for someone who wanted to focus on that type of game? Really? Absolutely. Really. So, so Inquisition as a power, and uh -huh. um, I'll just describe the power to you. Uh, Writ of Inquisition. So you put a judgment up on the wall, and you can either aim it. You can aim it at any of the assemblies. So you could say, uh, "I'm going to inquisit this person to question their their wisdom in this action." So you would aim that at the wisdom assembly because it's pertaining to wisdom. Right. Uh, you might aim it at the general assembly if it's just a generic sort of we're inquisiting this person because we're not sure of what happened at this particular time. General assembly gets so that's anyone gets to vote on that that has a congregation. Yeah. Uh, and then you can also, if it's for example, one inquisition that I've done was against one in my own nation, so I specifically put that up as a highborn assembly inquisition. Um, anyone who is a priest who has a congregation has the ability to inquisit someone, so every oh, single priest okay. can do that role. Nice. Um, but it does use up your only judgment. So you only get one judgment unless you have a seat or something else. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that takes up your entire judgment. You can't then put up a judgment that says High Guard should be Heroes of the Way or whatever later on <laughs> uh, for that weekend anyway. <laughs> um, and we are all ready. Um, so, so when it comes to Inquisition, one thing that I do like to preface this with, because a lot of people assume the opposite uh, and well within their rights because of of real world inquisitions mm -hmm, the yes. inquisition doesn't always have to be a bad thing 
inquisitions could be a recognition of someone being an exemplar of the way yeah. or it could be a recognition of their efforts and their work yeah. uh, and whatever it might be so sometimes you'll be called to inquisition because you've done something really virtuous and we just want to explore that a little bit and then you know make everyone aware in the empire look this person just did this amazing thing there we go new goal new goal for godric although I, although i wish i hadn't known that now because it would have been hilarious to be like oh, I'm being <laughs> oh no what have i done <laughs> i need to uh, say my yeah. goodbyes to everyone i love yeah. you all <laughs> yeah um, but then at the same time an inquisition can also sometimes start off well-meaning and then suddenly end up really bad because you say something that you shouldn't have it it, it can just happen like that um so yeah that that's that's the basic power with inquisition if it is voted through if it is given authorization by the synod you have a person for a whole hour they are legally bound to sit with you or stand or whatever uh with you for an hour they don't have to talk, they don't have to speak, they don't have to answer your questions, but they are legally bound to be with you for an hour. Yes. What comes with that is that obviously people are quite busy. So yes. if I was to inquisit a general, for example, mm -hmm. I cannot demand their time when the military council is in session or when they are due to be on the battlefield, yeah. because that would be an abuse of priestly powers. Because if they didn't turn up, I can go to the uh, magistrates and go, this person was called to inquisition and they failed to turn up. That is actually punishable by the magistrates. But if the magistrate turns around and goes, yeah, but they're a general and they were called to the military council, that's an abuse of priestly powers. Uh -huh. I can then en end up getting punished. You're, you're in, yeah, you're in the I'm spotlight. In, I'm in trouble. So what often tends to happen is there sometimes is an OC check-in outside of the game which is are what time are you available in the weekend like what when are you available to do this yeah do yeah yeah because then it's just easy and no one inadvertently does anything like that well yeah I, I guess that means like you're not like out of character punishing someone for being like oh yeah no you don't get to do your general stuff now because we we as players didn't like the way you did that it's more yeah. of a oh this is the game you know when can you do it you know that type yeah of um, there are inquisitions that have happened where people are called in at a certain time because they know that their position wouldn't be busy and they don't have anything official to be doing. So therefore, a surprise inquisition against that person has happened. And, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's scary as hell, but that's so cool. <laughs> but, you, but, but, you will be but you will be notified. You have to be notified. So yeah. it could be a civil servant is sent to find you because the yeah. priest who's raised the inquisition has said i haven't pre-warned them and i don't know where they are because i don't actually know who this person is mm -hmm. i just know this is their description this is who they are this is the nation that they're from give them as much indicators as possible and this is their hall or whatever or their house mm -hmm. a civil servant might on occasion they might not they might turn around to the priest and go no absolutely you go tell them um but sometimes a civil servant might just rock up to your camp and be like hey do you know this person? Yeah, that's me. Cool. Inquisition at 12 o'clock tomorrow. Are you available? Yes. See you there. Um... Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean... So, so I'd that probably we... wear myself. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I've, I've heard people... I don't even know... If, like, I've heard people say, oh, yeah, I know, it's, it's not really a theocracy, but that, that it's got strong theocratic themes, right? We are a theocracy. I'm sorry. It, Anyone yeah. who says we're not a theocracy. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, because I'm just like, well, that's that's literally having to answer to the, that's literally having to answer to the religious institution. That's the... So let's, 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 let's really show how the theocratic we are. Mm -hmm. The throne is answerable to the synod. Yeah. Like, if the synod decides to inquisit, in inquisit the throne, we can do. If we revoke the throne, we can do so we can remove them from that position if they then get voted back in we can't we can't revoke them for a whole year after they've been voted back in mm -hmm. but we can remove the throne the synod has the power to do that yes mm -hmm. it's through the general assembly and that means every single priest has the right to vote on that but the synod wields a huge amount of power yeah huge amount of power well, let's let's talk about the synod then so what what can you explain what the synod because i i kind of know that it's it's something to do with the higher religion game so what what is the actual uh mechanics of the synod and how it works in the empire in a nutshell so basically the hub 
Uh, it's a nice little uh, built. I say little. It's a huge tent uh, where the civil servants are mostly posted, uh-huh. um, and there is a wall, an entire one side of the wall that is filled with what is called judgments, uh, and these are the voices of the priests. So I might walk in. And I say I've decided that. Let's take something that actually happened. So, mm. uh, Don really, really. Uh, liked the fact that they were being questioned by grey pilgrims who are highborn um, oh. about why true love and glory matter. So a Donish priest walked into the synod and they were like, as you know, as as a, a proud Donish person who believes in these things, and just because they're not in our doctrine doesn't mean that they're against the way, we want to encourage our troubadours and our priests to engage with high guard and have this open discourse this open discussion they put that in a judgment and they clip it up to the board with the civil servant who puts it up there with a number they will then go around all of the Donish troubadours they'll go to the Donish troubadour meeting i assume you may have one it's called the national assembly Mm -hmm. and they will say right this is a thing that i have put up it's judgment number 48 uh, please vote on it. This is what I this is what I want the outcome to be. The Donish uh, voted on it unanimously, pretty much, to say yes. This is what we want. <laughs> of course. And what? Of course, of course. Of course. And what happened yes, is is that for I think it was for a year. Don't quote me on that. But for a significant amount of time, PD acknowledged that this passed with greater majority. So that means that. You know, it, it was a significant portion of the Donish Assembly voted yes for it. And the actual mechanical effects that that had was that Highgard and Dawn, as uh, National Assemblies and Synods, uh, arms of the Synod, actually became really close. Mm-hmm. So what that meant was is that troubadours were traveling into Necropolis with me as Silas, and they were coming up to me and they were going, now, true love is not against doctrine, Silas. And I'm sat there having to go, okay... <laughs> but then in the reverse, but then in the reverse, Donish troubadours were also welcoming us as highborn to walk into the Donish uh, fields and houses and castles yes. and whatever else and say to them, okay, we believe in washing our hands. We believe in raising our hoods. We have these hearth magics that are that are ours. And this is why they're not against doctrine or religion. And that had real mechanical effects. It meant that um, at one point, Donish priests could raise um, judgments that could be voted on by highborn priests. Oh, okay. Damn. And vice versa. Um, I don't think it was ever implemented. I don't no. think it was ever made. I don't think anyone used that mm-hmm. power. But that came about because of that. Another example of the Synod's reach is um, we created um so for example the wisdom cardinal uh for a year got the power to point the wisest minds at a particular problem and get an answer for it so for example there was a magical incident that occurred in uh i think it was sarvos i don't know basically there's a swamp there filled with weird creatures no one knows what to do with it ah crazy weird (laughs) (laughs) rather than rather than dedicating an entire um senate motion of research towards it the wisdom priests created this particular role for the cardinal or a power for the cardinal and our cardinal at e3 basically pointed at this big swamp thing and went what do we do with this and all the wisest minds of the empire got together and then pd between those two released a statement that basically said so you can keep it and keep it as is and it'll become a tourist attraction you can get rid of it but this is how you get rid of it and then this was like an option between the two like if you mm-hmm. don't want to get rid of it you do whatever those are powers that have purely come about because a single player has put up a sin on judgment up onto the wall and other people have voted in favor for mm-hmm. it and that it really can change things we had a schism we had a religious schism Mm -hmm. because a player came back from a true life vision and they stated against doctrine this is going to cause such a fuss if anyone listens to this but um, we love it yeah (laughs) they call it against doctrine (laughs) they and they were hot board as well so (laughs) um they basically stated that uh there is a heaven beyond 
the labyrinth. When you become a paragon, you go to oh. heaven. Oh, yeah. And that they were the reincarnated soul of the first empress. Oh, <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's a claim. <laughs> it was a, yeah, it, co- it, caused a, it caused a a lot. Um, this person um, did not sway from that opi- from the thing that they said. They never did. It got to the point where armies, our armies, were not working well with other armies because they were disagreeing over this particular oh. ideology. Yeah. So Dawn and Highgard believed in Yale, and so our armies were fine. Marcher armies and Dawn didn't work well because of that <laughs> particular issue. Oh, uh, Navarre didn't get on well because they start because other people started to say no this is against doctrine this is not what there's no proof of this da, 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 da. um she believed in it so much she st- stuck with it she's called yale and the and the schism was called the yale schism um she continued to maintain that she was the reincarnated soul of the empress and she was executed for it um, but right up until that day, right up until the moment the sword was swung, she still maintained her position on it. So much so that there were points where people were leaving their nations to join Yale's group. Um, and it was causing huge political shifts because people were going, I believe her, and other people were going, I don't. She's a heretic. She's a, a blasphemer. Mm-hmm. Um and again, that's down to a single player who went away and did a true life vision. Who knows if sh- what they saw actually was that or not? Nobody that's, knows. Oh, that's, so, that's, that's so cool though, right? That's they've so cool. come back and they've said something. They put <laughs> up a judgment that said, we need to recognize that there is a, what was it, what was it called? It was a place without sorrow, I think it was, uh-huh. or a, place, a land without tears. That was okay. what she called it. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was a land without tears beyond the labyrinth. And the synod needs to recognize this and put it into doctrine and look at the amount of game yeah. that it's created. It still has a knock-on effect even that's, now. That's that's great. So how does the how does the true life vision work? Is that is that from uh do they get it in the player pack and things like that, do they? No, it's a whole experience. There is a tent oh. that is off the field. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically you have to go to the gatekeepers. Uh, which is the they are the seconds to cardinals um okay. and the gatekeeper council has doses of true liao which is like our most concentrated amount of liao yeah and liao is what we use for our priestly things yes yeah true liao can do a lot of things it can make um any priest skill become a permanent thing so for example the league just uh made the walls of holberg permanently dedicated to wisdom because they got a dose of truly out chucked it on the wall and then did a wisdom um dedication to it or a wisdom aura to it but the other thing that truly i can do and this is where it gets interesting yeah is we believe as the synod it can give you a vision of a past life that your soul has had so a vision into the past as a soul that you've had before yeah. The way that this is decided is people sort of step up for, I guess, election in it. And the gatekeepers decide who gets what truly out for what. Do they get it because they want to do something interesting with it? Or do they get it to have a past life vision? Once that's confirmed and once that is done and they've got that, um, PD will be notified of that at the event. The next event that you go to, you will be told by PD... At this time, come out of the main uh, thing with your vision priest, so a priest who guides oh, you. Well. <laughs> okay. And then you go to, and then you go to the encounter tent. There is a there is a tent that will be set up specifically for your vision, and you will experience this with one other person. That's incredible. Right. Oh my and, God. <laughs> and it can be anything. So we've had it before where someone has had a past life vision of what they believed to be the cardinal of purity which is a false virtue okay but they had a vision of it when high guard and the empire as it was then didn't see purity as a false virtue so they saw a meeting where they were like discussing the fact that 
it had been voted down. They were no longer going to, purity was no longer considered a true virtue. And it was this scenario was just them and these now cultists going, what do we do? And so there was a marcher that said, we're going to go back home and hide. Uh, and then there was other people going, I'll die before I do that. So this kind of fed into this idea of going, oh, wait, there's purity cultists that might be still hiding in the marchers or in high guard or whatever. Um, there's been another vision where, um, like I said, the Yale vision, people say that her guidance priest agreed with her, that what she saw and what she interpreted oh. was correct. Wow. So yeah. <laughs> there was no reason to go against that. Yeah. We think we don't uh, know. And, and that it causes like pr real discourse as well because you're just like because you can't even you know you can't even metagame that too much either, can you? Because you're just like well we don't uh, you know we do, out of character we don't know either. Like what? <laughs> yeah. So the, the the law might be correct, you know. Yeah. I mean, one of the most recent examples of someone completely changing everything about their character was one of your Donish players not sure if they were a general or not they might have been but they became a freeborn and they became a freeborn with the intention of reclaiming um the new army that was up and coming and would, and generalship okay. would be electionable for because they had a past life vision of them being the ones who destroyed that army mm -hmm. yeah. so when they came out of that past life vision they were like for me to atone for that crime, I must become its new general. So they changed oh, wow. <laughs> they changed their entire like so as a Dornishman, they removed themselves from Dawn, they went to the egregore of of the freeborn and said, I wish to join your nation. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did. Um and now I I'm not sure if they are a general or not, but I knew that that was their intention. They were also originally a throne candidate and they gave oh, that, really? that up as well. <laughs> they gave up that as well. And that's that's, a, that's a huge amount to give up or something like that, but that's still is so cool. Right. So <laughs> so there's a lot of players out there that see past life vision as a as as a as something that they want to aspire to be getting because yeah. it is it is cool. <laughs> it's yeah. it's a very cool thing. There's a picture, um, there's a, a photographer that went into one of these encounter tents and um took pictures of the setting. And I I was just I was blown away by it um we don't know who had that vision who knows oh um, that's that's cool though right <laughs> there's so there's a scribe there's a scribe in navarre i think or mm -hmm. in urizen and their entire game was they created a um document of all of the past life visions so they go and speak to the people who have had these past life visions and they basically say would you like to write this down but then they also say we cannot claim responsibility if this person lies so what we write down is what they tell us. We try to confirm it with their, you know, their their guidance priest. But yeah. if they lie, they lie. And yeah. Then they write it down. yeah. So it's just, all you can do. It's just a record. But it's it's, just a record. It, yeah, so this is an important part of the actual, the, the way, the, well, the way, the, the, it's, it's important part of the, the that part of the game. So people who don't uh, know the system or have, have never played or maybe just listening to this for the first time, uh, like, re, like, having past lives is like a fact right because we you know we, we literally speak to them through 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 magic right so yeah you, your your human soul has been reincarnated several times is reincarnation i've used re the word reincarnation a yeah, few times is that the right word to use? yeah absolutely it pretty much fine. is right yeah yeah reincarnate. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but that but that's yeah i just thought i'd, I'd clarify like that's an important it's an important part that is it's not just a oh i think it's going to be a past or i think i've spoken to a past life in this setting that is an actual fact that you can do that yeah yeah your character reincarnates multiple times um with the synod believes with the ultimate human destiny being um that you become a paragon and ascend go beyond the labyrinth so you you're no longer Ooh. in this cycle oh you can do that <laughs> you go somewhere else we oh. don't know what it is oh i want to do and that this is why yale was such an <laughs> enticing thing because we were like maybe this is finally the answer it's but actually where they go. we don't yeah. know yeah. we yeah. don't know we believe paragons are no longer one of the signs of a paragon is that you don't um you you um it, it's something to do with the fact that you can't see their past life vision like you you can't have a past life vision of you being a paragon 
Because it's the okay. end. Because it's the because end. It's point. The end. As because a paradigm, you've point. gone, you've gone somewhere else. We don't know where else yet. We don't have the answer for that. We're still mm-hmm. trying to figure that out. Um, and yeah, so that's that's one of the things. An exemplar is, you know, the second stage of that. So yeah, so explain to me what a because I, I keep I keep hearing exemplars and because I we've spoken to friends who have had characters that were exemplars. Yeah. Do, do you have to be dead to be an exemplar? No. No, nope. we have uh, an orc who is currently an exemplar uh, of wisdom. Uh, they are a great player. Mm-hmm. I thoroughly enjoy it because, as a highborn player who has issues with orcs on occasion, uh, it is very, very fun to go to an orc player who is an exemplar of my sort of line of thinking and go, I need advice on this exemplar. Oh. <laughs> very fun. That's um, a great bit of game, though. Great bit of game. Um, and it's very funny. The interactions that we've had so far have been have been a lot of fun because <laughs> you could just see him sort of going, Really? Yeah, really? <laughs> well, 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 really? look who comes crawling look, back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I show him the respect of an exemplar because I, I should. I, he's mm. been recognized mm. by the Synod. But then at the same time, I'm like, yeah, but you're also an orc, so you're not really going to reincarnate, so... <laughs> yeah, we, we were fascinated when we were learning about the the, the orcs and, yeah, the, the difference in, yeah, their, you know, the, their process of process of death, as you would say, <laughs> as, as opposed to... Yep. Opposed to you. But that, it's, it's so cool that they've PD have decided, like, oh, this is going to be different for orcs, because, like you say, it just puts that... Just that little bit of just a little bit of conflict. It's not a huge like wedge of conflict, but it is just like that thing that's just, just always gonna be brewing. But it's it's, brewing. it's also caused for them as a player who's an orc who's become an exemplar. Mm-hmm. It's caused them a lot of, an awful lot of gain because the um oh the Suma, the Suma Republic, who okay. have the way as their imagine the empire. But the religion is everything. Senate, magistrates, everything is in the se- is in the synod. Okay. Nothing is outside of it. Mm-hmm. They are they are what the empire should be in Silas's mind. Mm. <laughs> uh, sometimes, on occasion. Um, but for example, they they have discourse with us. They have conversations with us about how we perceive the way. And one of the biggest conflicts that came out was they basically said, "You've appointed an exemplar." who's an orc that doesn't fly that doesn't make sense they can't reincarnate they can't do anything so they came and inquisitioned the exemplar of wisdom who's an orc to basically go are you an exemplar actually um so that was great game for them and they've Uh they've had to fight their position they've had to say yeah no i'm an exemplar this is why so Um, so the exemplar title does that does that come from an inquisition in the first place does that do how how does the process work of choosing who's an exemplar so you have to match certain criteria so if you go onto the wiki wiki they have uh signs of an exemplar and signs of a paragon and you have to match a certain number to be an exemplar, and then you have to match an even greater number to be a paragon. Um, okay. To be recognized is you have to, someone has to raise a judgment of recognition on your name in the Synod. And it cannot be raised in, well, if it's an assembly one, so if it's a wisdom one, it will be that assembly that votes for it. Um but if it's unknown which exemplar you would be, it would be the General Assembly that marks for it. I believe it's the General Assembly anyway, but it's a lot of people have to vote for you. Um, it's not easy, and that's fine. PD have said multiple times, it's not easy because if you get it, you've achieved something magnificent. Yeah. Um, and as an orc as well, like, hats off. Like, that is hard. Yeah. <laughs> convincing a whole bunch of priests that yeah we might be having separate experiences and i might not reincarnate but i am i am worthy of of this recognition um and i've you know i've made jokes before with that player where i'm like well it's as high as you can get because you can't become a paragon can you because you know you're you're not coming back anyway um which you're not in this to make friends are you no no i'm here to i am here to be proven wrong several times a day. Like, absolutely um and the orc players some of the orc players enjoy that role play yeah they enjoy that especially him because you know he's had to prove everything everything 
uh, every step of the way. Um, so the, the mark of an exemplar is a player that has put significant amount of time or someone in their stead yeah. has put in a significant amount of time to prove that this person is worthy of that of that title, which is why you don't see, you know, a hundred exemplars running around the field. You've got to there convince are... a lot of people, right? So it's, right. It, so what could be something that is like totally momentous in one nation, you know, it'd be like, oh, oh, this, this person, the exemplar of courage, you know, that they should be, uh, when it gets brought to the other, the, the other nations and everyone has to scrutinize it. They're like, nah, nah. <laughs> is it, is, is it, it really? Is I don't it think though? So. Yeah. yeah so for example there's a so one of the signs is a miracle um and that's not exactly small <laughs> not exactly no. small um so one of the signs that i have seen recently um is someone has had their image appear in fire in the sky um so that's considered a miracle <laughs> But yeah. the difficulty is, is you now have to prove to everybody that that happened. That happened. Okay. Yeah. Because it only happened for a select amount of time. Didn't, it's not like the, the image is still there. It's not like I could just point at it and go, see, um, <laughs> you have to walk up to people and go, yes, their image appeared above the sky. And when they rightfully in wisdom go, did it? You have to be smart enough to be able to prove that point. I don't know how you prove it, but you prove it somehow. Um, and spontaneous, so a spontaneous um, aura, which is yeah. a magical, um, which is a religious aura, that's considered a miracle as well. So even if it's a bad one, we're not technically legally allowed to get rid of it because that's seen as um, a desecration, which is a, a, a religious crime. But if somebody, say, for example, say, for example, yourself there with your shield, which is mm -hmm. a beautiful shield. It's far too colourful for my liking, but there we go. Uh, <laughs> it's got flowers on it. But say, for example, you were on the <laughs> battlefield and the ref walked up to you and handed you a ribbon that said, Hallowing Strength 5 to Courage. Your shield has just spontaneously been hallowed to this item. This is the role-playing effect. That's a miracle. And I would hope you would go to a troubadour and just go, can you verify this for me can you <laughs> why is this, this vibrating <laughs> why is this vibrating um and with an in and with uh the skill of insight they can check and if it's if this priest is told by a ref yep that's a spontaneous thing that priest might turn around to you and say well that's the first sign of an exemplar or paragon you're on your way uh -huh. and you know you then have to start looking at everything else and going, well, wait a minute, do I have any other signs that have happened in my play as as this mm. character that could be identified as a sign of the exemplar? Yeah. And then again, you have to start proving it. And then you have to, because then you're like, oh yeah, then, so everyone would get excited and then people start going, where, where did you get the shield? Tell us exactly what happened when you started feeling courageous when you hold the shield. Have you been in contact with anyone? Yeah, that that would be that would be that would be an amazing game. <laughs> yeah, like that. So it really does develop, and that's the thing about the synod that I love as a player is there are so many different strands of it. Some players, as a priest, they're just the hype man. That's mm -hmm. that's it. They're the hype person. <laughs> They walk onto the <laughs> battlefield dressed in a little bit of armor just so they can stand at the back and go, we are ambitiously going to chop these orcs' heads off. I'm all Great. Right, yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Love that. They're also the counselors for their friends' characters because all of our characters are just a little bit traumatized, yeah. let's be honest. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Um, wouldn't, be a, wouldn't be an RPG character if they weren't. Right? Exactly. Yeah, so, so you have that as well but then you also have the politics then you have the inquisitors then you have the theologists the ones who are just like right so we think we reincarnate is that true let's let's find more evidence to prove that let's find more things that say yes to that if we think that yale is wrong what do we have beyond the labyrinth and the one thing that i will say is that although we don't have a god we do acknowledge that there was a creator yeah yeah however that creator doesn't give a toss about us they just went here's this lovely thing do what oh. you will with it. <laughs> enjoy I your sun care. 
Enjoy yeah. your sandbox. <laughs> yeah, enjoy your sandbox. Because quite frankly, I've got other things to be doing. I'm so, bored with this project now. Yeah, I'm bored <laughs> with this project. I'm going to make another one better over there. Um, <laughs> so whilst we acknowledge that there's a creator, there's some theologists that are like, okay, but is the creator ambivalent or is the creator subtly, you know, poking and prodding us? Yeah. We don't know. Let's see if there's other evidence. So when it comes to the Synod game and when it comes to being a priest, there are so many facets to what a priest actually is. The, you can be anything. You can be a warrior and still be a priest. It yeah. doesn't It doesn't dictate massively what your what your character should what you, or what you have to do. do yeah and that's what's cool that's what, yeah. I, that's what I love about yeah it. <laughs> well i'm already yeah i'm already learning a, a ton here because because I, I just assumed like the synod was because you mentioned cardinals earlier are they the ones that have high seats on the the synod is it like a is it like the senate basically is my question is it like so yeah so the cardinals have the council of nine mm -hmm. there are eight cardinals but the ninth seat is the throne's seat because they Ooh. get to sit on that council too. Oh, okay. And the cardinal's council has a significant amount of power. When they say something, the rest of the synod takes notice and the wider empire takes notice um, because they don't often talk, they don't often vote on minimal matters. They vote on big things. Okay. Um, and that's why voting for your cardinal is so important. Uh, right. so who, so, yeah, so who gets to vote for the cardinal then? So that would be the assemblies. So mm -hmm. you have eight assemblies. You have the Assembly of the Way, mm -hmm. which is priests who are not dedicated to any particular right, okay. virtue. They are yeah, dedicated yeah. to just being a priest. And that yeah. comes with its bonuses and with its, um, uh, its negatives Probably, as well yeah. as a priest. Uh, and then you have all of your other virtues, so wisdom, ambition, pride, yeah. courage, yada, yada, yada. Um, and the rest. <laughs> and the rest. I don't care about the rest because wisdom's <laughs> the best. But, um, 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 so all of those assemblies will vote on their cardinals, mm -hmm. um, and that will happen at a specific time. So with the wisdom one, I believe that's every... So we do autumn summer mm -hmm. i think it's in the summer or it's in the spring i can't remember which one it is but we yeah. we vote on our cardinal then every oh, yeah. year so that'll keep mixing yeah. up as well because every time there's a synod meeting it'll be it's likely there's going to be new people in there new things things going on and it's also about your cardinal like has your cardinal actually stepped up and defended the assembly when it said something so the wisdom assembly for example we pissed off a lot of people at e1 when we first came in because we actually caused all of the empire to question their priests we basically said don't take what we say um for granted question it that is what wisdom says question received wisdom or received uh -huh. information so every single priest suffered a minus one to their congregation and their liao production oh. <laughs> so you can imagine everyone was a bit miffed yeah and then heaved yeah. so the other assemblies got together and were like absolutely not don't question the synod blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. uh and so then it really it came down to the cardinal council to sort of go okay who's doing what like the synod's getting a bit messy right now and actually that's the reason why urizen and the freeborn as a nation they currently are less affected by judgments made by the synod because of that judgment it's an echoing effect from that because those the people in those nations basically went no i agree i i will i will continue to question stuff so basically anything that we pass now if it doesn't pass with the greater majority it doesn't affect those two nations so urizen and freeborn are like yeah but is that actually a good idea or is that actually <laughs> what you're trying to say um which as a wisdom priest i'm like yay but also yeah. as a regular <laughs> priest i'm like oh no awkward. um so yeah it's it, I, yeah it, it, it oh god it gets complicated but yeah it, the cardinals the cardinals like are the ones that made a statement which was basically like yes question received wisdom mm -hmm. but we as the synod have final say like yeah. that's basically yeah what said. yeah so yeah so, so yeah so like so say if i was say if i was like a a dornish troubadour I would have, so I would have a a troubadour meeting or mm -hmm. the, the assembly, mm -hmm. and then I would have the 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 virtue mm -hmm. that I was a part of. Uh, mm -hmm. Would be uh, I would then have an assembly for that as well, mm -hmm. 
and then that's that's where they vote on the cardinal for that virtue or you know whatever of the way you know yeah. um yeah well, it's, it's making making way more sense now but it's 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 it like this is great because we like we worried like when we first started playing this game we were like we didn't know whether we were going to be into like the fighting especially robin robin was like oh yeah i don't know yeah i was like oh, i'll be yeah. fine you, you'll get in there you'll do that it's not all about fighting then we've just we've ended up just enjoying the fighting side of it fighting. And we, I keep trying to, I, I keep trying to explain to like uh, people that I'm trying to recruit, as you do, uh, that I'm saying, oh yeah, you could come, and they're like, oh, I don't. I'm like, no, it's not. You don't have to do all the stuff. You don't have to get in the armor that you can spend your weekend. And it just like it's 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 baffling to me, even just like hearing about all this, being like, oh god, I could literally just be a theologian for the weekend, yeah. <laughs> just yeah. just contemplate, just be like, yeah. hmm. I know a really good. Uh... I know a really good researcher, a priest researcher, or just general researcher, really, um, who spent their last event taking imaginary drugs, because these drugs were new and off of the off of they were they were suspicious. No one knew what they did, and so they were like, "Well, as a researcher, I'm a do whatever this ribbon says I do," um, <laughs> and now they're in trouble with me because it's it it this particular drug. Uh, disconnects you from your ability to use Liao, which oh. we believe might mean that it's somewhat affecting your soul. And as a highborn, I have issues with that. Um, yes. So there are there are there are new things coming into the field all the time. There are mm -hmm. items from foreign nations that have weird effects that we don't necessarily understand. Uh, the league just recently had a whole bunch of masks become randomly and spectacularly aurat with religious auras but Ooh, okay. like, we're not quite sure what virtue they are because they're not quite wisdom but they're not quite vengeance but they're also not quite this that or the next thing all right okay so so like so me mechanically then right because this is, this is something i want to so like so it, do they so these masks in particular does that mean that mechanically they have a, a ribbon on them that says mm -hmm. what what you you say what then do you do as a priest to be like, because I don't know any of the abilities, around, like, uh, how do yeah. you even start to be like, what is this? You know, do, do, is, is there an ability you can use to identify yeah. it? Yeah, so um, there's two levels of it, and it's called insight. Um, if you uh, you spend something like 10 seconds of role play uh, viewing this particular thing and you take a dose of Liao, mm -hmm. um, the way that I take Liao originally was I used to have purple gin shots, which at E1 wasn't great because I came across a whole bunch of haunted people that I had to exercise. So I ended up having six shots in about 10 seconds. Like I was downing shots left, right, center. Yeah. I was like, anyone yeah. else needs help? <laughs> uh, which is not. Which is so, not uh, what, at what point did you go, maybe this was a mistake? <laughs> uh, I think after Where's my, my second, wisdom now? <laughs> yeah, I think it was after my second exorcism that I was just like, this is this is not going well. Um, so now I use Percy Pigs. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I use those little purple, 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 purple pussy pigs, pop one in the mouth, chew on that, and then I say whatever it is I want to say. Yeah. Um, and when you incite something, that then gives you the ability to read the 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 note, the the ribbon. Mm -hmm. Um if you spend a bit more time on it and you have a ref with you, mm -hmm. they will identify the object, they'll type that into their tablet, and then they will look at the circumstances around that particular mm -hmm. item. If you don't have a ref with you, you can head to God and do that. Mm -hmm. uh, with the masks, for example, I did that. I went to God and um, the ref was confused. <laughs> oh, really? So the ref ended up escalating it to the next person who was then also confused and oh, so wow. escalated it to Matt P, uh, who had to radio in and basically describe this. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Uh, That's amazing. <laughs> that was my first ever insight as well. I was like, <laughs> oh no what have i done i've broken the game <laughs> just, yeah. um, <laughs> broken the system and basically what was said was is there is no specific virtue that this provides to but it has a mechanical effect and you can remove it with a single dose of liao and dedicate it or or hallow it to a different a different thing oh, okay yeah so that that was the mechanics that was explained to me so then when i went back to this leagueish person i was like it's not a specific religion. I can't identify which virtue it is. So I can't really say whether it's a bad one or a good one. Um, all I know is that the feelings that you've described to me are not necessarily positive. 
So it's up to you if you want to remove that aura or not. But as far as I can tell as a priest, that is not a false virtue. So therefore is not against our religion. Therefore you're not at risk. <laughs> um, currently, but you know, I can't, currently. given what good the luck. ribbon said, yeah, <laughs> given what the ribbon said, I was like, good luck with the magistrates when you get dragged before them. Oh, like, really? Oh, oh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was basically a very leagueish um, ribbon. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, I see. Yeah. I'm trying not to be too descriptive about it because they <laughs> no, might no. still be using that I, mask and I don't want yeah. to give it away. <laughs> I, I think uh, I think uh, I think I kinda of catch a drift. Definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, we have loads of skills. Um hallowing is when you take an item and you hallow it to something, um, which can be useful uh for weapons and stuff like that, because if you're a soldier who sometimes doesn't learn his lessons, I might you know, give you a wisdom aura on there so that you think about it a little more before you start smacking people in the face with your hammer. Maybe. Um, <laughs> Keeping my swords away from you. <laughs> <laughs> or you could be a courage priest who then goes, you don't do enough swinging out of your swords. So here, have a, have a you know, a courage um, based aura um, hallowing, which then makes you go, see that druge line? I can take that by myself. Woo! Uh, you know, that kind yeah, of, that that's kind how, of feeling. That's how, that's how we roll um, anyway. <laughs> so that's hallowing. We also have um, excommunication. Oh, okay. That sounds... So that's where, and this is where it's, again, theol theologically based. We believe we disconnect your soul from your body. It is the... In Silas's opinion, it is the highest form of punishment that you can give to anybody. Yeah. Other priests may disagree with that. Um, but effectively, we believe that anyone that enters the labyrinth, aka dies whilst uh -huh. excommunicated, doesn't come back from the labyrinth. They are just left wandering in there forever. Cool. Which is why when you say to someone, get lost, it's a really, really, really big insult. Yeah. <laughs> in yeah. Um, yeah. So excommunication is for criminals, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, I almost, I almost did an excommunication without a writ, which is highly illegal because you're meant to let the synod vote on it. Um, I almost did that without letting the synod vote on it because I didn't have enough time. I didn't have enough time, <laughs> and this person was going to do bad things. So I was like, "I'll take it on the chin. I don't care. I'm doing this." Yeah. Um, so that's another one. Um, we also have um, consecration. So an area can become hallowed to a particular mm. aura or whatever. So, you know, if you wanted your camp to feel particularly prideful, you could have it um, consecrated to, you know, a pride, uh, yeah. a pride aura. Yeah. I, 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 cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I, will, I will say, like, even though th this might be sounding quite complicated and, and deep, and it is deep to... Uh, new players and new player listeners. Uh, no, but I, it's actually very new player friendly. The whole system is because, like, you don't need to know any of this stuff. Like when we came into the game, we literally when we did come across things like ah, I think someone literally gave me at our first event. Someone literally gave me a sword, and they were like, oh yeah, I got this sword, blah blah blah, and they, they showed it, and then they were just like, oh, yeah, just like just read the ribbon, <laughs> and, I was like, yeah, read, the and it just tells you what to feel. And yep. also, yeah, you, you see the ribbons on the on the tents. Like people put the ribbons ab above the tents, and when you're walking in, you're just like, oh, and they'll just like, you know, characters we'll point, point to it, yep. and you're just like, oh, you don't need to know all of this stuff to nope. to to interact with that part of the game. So you don't need to have all that complex knowledge of how it's done. You just you walk yeah. in as a new player, and they're like, oh, by the way, when you're in this tent, this is how you're feeling. They point to the ribbon. Yeah. Just, yeah, the the only piece of, piece of advice I'd give is just be open to the influence that that ribbon gives you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if it makes you feel out of character, uncomfortable, mm. you can deny it. You can say, yeah. actually, no, I won't take the sword or I'll leave this area or whatever that might be. Um, yeah. I was fed some marcher tea because a marcher decided that I looked a little bit sad and glum. Yeah. Um, and so they came up to me with some marcher tea and just like, drink this and i was like sure okay i'll drink this took a sip and then they were like here's a ribbon no yeah uh and basically <laughs> i misread it so this is entirely on me mm -hmm. but i spent the next 12 hours being hyperactive excited happy uh which for my character is quite unusual <laughs> at one point at one point uh my cloak which is back there um i basically ran through navarre 
with a eye like this, like I was a bat, going wee. You know, you know what's funny about those type of roleplay effects is that you actually forget sometimes that that is part of the game, especially as a new player. That's you forget it. that's part of the game, and so someone does something crazy, and you're just like, what the, "What's that person what's doing? Happening? Like, what, what, what type of thing are they? Do- that's what? crazy." And then you forget, then you realize, then someone says, "Oh yeah, that person, you know, they took some in character drugs or something." Yeah, you walk up to yeah. I had oh god. I had a really serious conversation happen with me and Scarlett, uh, who plays Brother Luke, um, who actually made that cloak, um, they they were stood next to me discussing with a marcher about a very, very serious thing called Matilda, a marcher. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Attacked. yeah. Very big, very big yeah. dramatic thing. It was. And I was being made to stand there and, and listen to this. And actually, as Silas, I'm very interested in this conversation. But because of the role-playing effect of being hyperactive excited and happy i was stood there just doing this like just bouncing and eventually scarlet was just like every so often just putting a hand on me to like try and make me still and like trying to hold me down and then i just like start basically vibrating again and then they looked at me to ask me a question and my response to them was i don't really want to talk about it though because i i, I just like being happy and this is not a happy subject and yeah. they were just like what (laughs) what (laughs) and then when i responded with you know matilda's matilda it's not that big a deal and then they were just like they were just like silas shut up silas shut up and i was like okay (laughs) and they were just like that is not he is not okay (laughs) (laughs) what has happened to silas so it's a role-playing effect it can cause so many things i ended up insulting somebody who's a good friend of mine who was terminal they were dying Oh dear. Uh, yeah. uh, it was it was Anduin, <laughs> really good friend of mine, uh-huh. and I was like, and I basically oh, just turned around to him and I was just like, oh, it's fine. You're going to the labyrinth. You'll come out. You'll be super fast because you're super super wisdom, um, and I can't wait to add your name to the Book of the Dead. That's a bit soon, I guess. I guess it's a bit soon for me to say that, but I w- I'm going to put your name in the Book of the Dead. It's a good thing. And he was like, great, thanks, for great, that. thanks. I was like, it's- <laughs> friend like oh god but that's oh that's gosh. what thing does right yeah and also yeah going back to like what we said at the beginning with the whole like yes and thing that it's not like um you know it's not like some like weird charades where it's just like you are now a chicken and you have to role play as such it is some of it is very vague like this there's, there was one of them someone passed me one uh it was like a hallowed it was in the marches it was like a hallowed fish or something like that and i was like i, I read that i read the thing and to be honest i couldn't actually make head nor tail of it no pun intended i couldn't like, i couldn't i couldn't I, I didn't actually know what it actually meant so i was i didn't really do anything with it i was just it was, i can't even remember what it said but it was very very vague yep. <laughs> i was just like okay you know so like, some of them will be like you chafe at the idea of being told what to do Go yeah on. they're that type of thing and that, you just that's like, great yeah there'll be another one that will just be like everything around you seems fuzzy and colorful and you're like okay <laughs> i i guess i'm just gonna look around me a lot and just be like "Ooh," you yeah. know <laughs> but also yeah most people don't there's no pressure either because i got me when i was like i think it was like e1 and the first day i was like handed that sword and it was just like oh yeah yeah i think it was a it was definitely a courage one because it was like, oh yeah you feel like mm-hmm. you could take on the world and blah blah, blah this that the other and I, I did feel a little bit of pressure to be like, oh shit, do I have to say something now? That's because this person's handed me this. And do I have to be like, ah, to do all that? But you, you don't really. People just g- give you these things to be like, oh, if you, you know, this is just something to literally play with. <laughs> you want and to it do can it. be useful in like a moment. So like, mm-hmm. you could be given that courage sword, and you're like, cool, I'm about to go out into battle. You're in the middle of a fighting scene. You're on the shield wall or whatever, and you see like a part of the wall break. You might suddenly go. This ribbon would. De- this ribbon is telling me that I will step up to the plate when things go wrong. Cool. You then run up into that breach and you're stood there single-handedly trying to hold back three orcs. That ribbon has affected you at the right time, and yeah. that's all that anybody that would do that for you wants is those little moments. And you know, you come back from that situation, you're going to go to everybody and go, "Did you see me hold that line?" Like. I'm amazing. Look how great I am. And everyone's going to be like, yeah, troubadours, write it down, get a story. This is amazing. <laughs> anyway, so, Kyle, when, what's your, uh, what, are the, what are the plans for uh, your character? And, uh, well, 
high guard <laughs> in general for the next for the next year? What's 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 on the horizon? So high guard has recently done a huge amount of work for Urzen. We've got you know we helped significantly in terms of getting back a territory for them, which is what we said we'd do. Mm-hmm. Now it's about our relationship with the Druze. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we laid the gauntlet down with Dawn by saying that the Barons will be the greatest game ever, ever to be seen by the Empire, and may the best nation win. Let's do it. We originally said that that was a thing. We, but we, you know, we we clarified that we would help Urizen first before we engaged in this game. Um, the Druze are now on the back foot. High Guard's gonna really take that to the fore. Like mm-hmm. we have we have history with the Druze uh that is very personal. Uh my character certainly does as well. So we will be pushing to have as much of the Druze uh warfare as possible, really. And we yeah. love fighting the Druze, you know? Who doesn't yeah. love fighting the Druze? Yeah, They're we, we hate the, Yeah, we hate the Druze, yeah, because we, we got we got like I think we kicked ass, but we got like hammered hard. Hammered. Like, yeah, we got yeah. hammered. John, <laughs> John's hard. about to have a whole bunch of uh, false auras to vengeance. I feel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, it's, so it... and you know, fair enough, makes yeah. sense. So I think um, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting. So, so do you think from like a like a PD level, like like um, meta game level, do you think that means we're gonna be doing a lot of druid stuff next year again? The generals have certainly indicated that the war fronts are holding well enough just mm-hmm. now and as long as nothing major changes we'll see where it goes our general like high guard generals are always thinking about urizen because urizen is on our doorstep and they lost a significant amount of their territories mm-hmm. um and we made a promise that we wouldn't let them lose a single one more mm-hmm. um we do have the issue of the Grendel and their treaty slowly coming to a close. Will they renew it or will they open up warfare with us again? Mm-hmm. Especially considering they've taken a nation, uh, a territory from the Freeborn. We want to get that back at some point because, you know. Yeah, because it's interesting because like, at a lower uh, a lower part of the game that we're playing, I keep, I keep saying lower, but you know what I mean? We're, we're not like, yeah. we're, we're not in like the big decision making part. We just like going out and drinking and hitting stuff real hard. And yeah. that's um, completely valid. It is, va- it is valid. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's valuable as well. For the other part that, we all, well. that we all go out and the, the, you have people that go out and do that. Uh, but yeah, so like the Grendel is one that, because obviously we're new players as well this year, like we haven't, I haven't even heard the word Grendel, you know, mm-hmm. in, in play. So that that's interesting. I wonder if PD will be like, oh yeah, but this is happening. Yeah, we've, also our um our uh ambassadors are facing quite a lot of interesting combat at the minute with the slave trade so oh, we obviously yeah. are part of the anti-slave community in in in, in game um yeah. and we have upset the slavers of the world uh and so there is a particular slave nation that is quite close to us who may decide you know, warfare is a good decision, um, which would mean we'd be facing against humans, um, not orcs. It, has that? Do you know? Has that happened? Not, not humans, but has that? Has it happened in game yet? That a? Because I know we've had barbarian nations that we've had treaties with. Has it happened that we've had a foreign nation that's now now an enemy nation? So the, so the Suma were at war with us for a while. Oh, were they? Okay. But they are so far away that we couldn't really fight it. <laughs> we were just like. You, you suck. Uh, that was pretty much it. Um, <laughs> as close as a cold war as you're going to get. In them. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we sometimes sent priests at each other to try and you know convert people, but that was pretty much it. I think. Um, yeah. In terms of my knowledge of it, I think it would be one of the first times that we've ever faced against a a foreign nation that's decided that you know they're worth having war with us now. Mm-hmm. Um, so that could be interesting in terms of. High guards positioning on that. We have fleet masters. We're on my my particular territory and my city that I live in is on the Bay of Catazar shoreline. So mm-hmm. I have a vested interest in making sure that the Grendel don't come up and steal my graves because I am a I am a steward of the dead. I look after dead people. Do not come and steal my graves. <laughs> um, but yeah, in terms of my own character, like yeah. I said before, I want to. I'm gonna 
I'm going to step up, hopefully, into the position of um, Inquisitor of Wisdom. The current incumbent of that position is very good at the job. They're a great player. Um, and actually, my character is not trying to oust them because he thinks that that player or that character, sorry, is bad at their job, which sometimes is the impetus to do something. It's actually just because I need another judgment to raise inquisitions for because i'm being slowed down by the mm -hmm. fact that i don't have enough judgments to raise right. these inquisitions yeah. yeah so it's more out of a mechanical i need more judgments let yeah. me have this i think from uh, a metagame point of view as well I'm, I'm hearing as well uh through kind of rumors that because the player base is like expanded so much and there's only a certain amount of hats that they want to encourage the behavior of people with hats having them for a year and then yeah. going okay you know instead of people hanging on to them so much and try and get people to incorporate that into their game not just say oh i've done it for a year now oh well there you go but try yeah try and make a game of like oh yeah, yeah you know i've been a general for three years now maybe it's time to either move on somehow you know yeah i've said as a as a player i would ideally like to wrap up the most prominent stuff for Silas with Inquisitions and being Inquisitor within a year, mm -hmm. maybe okay. two, but I have no, I have no desires to hold on to that position forever at all. Um, yeah. That's not, that's not exciting to me. That's not fun for me because actually my ambition, <laughs> <laughs> my ambition is to go from Inquisitor to either gatekeeper or cardinal mm -hmm. that's how i foresee myself going that's what i will want to do um i've certainly had egregores and other highborn players say that that's what i should go for um mm. and again if i became cardinal i would go into it with a very very specific idea of what i want to achieve mm -hmm. and you know once that particular strain of personal plot is over whether good or or negative mm -hmm. i would then give my seat hat whatever you want to call it yeah. um to another player because i'm not i'm not interested in in sit settling and it's yeah. actually something that i i preach about a lot i mm -hmm. i preach about that a lot where i'm saying no you go into a, a, a hat position or a seat seated position with a, something to achieve and when you achieve that thing move on yeah um because you. you know you gotta keep gotta keep it moving. Keep you it gotta, yeah, you gotta keep it moving. I, I guess it's, it, it'll be different for different seats as well, because there'll be certain seats that a lot of people are vying for, and a lot of people are very capable yeah. of doing. There'll be other seats that somebody's, you know, one or two people are very good at it, and there are yeah. lots of people with not much knowledge. Um, yeah. I think that's fine as long as as long as you're pushing the other players to, that are sort of interested to be like, yeah, go go run against them. You, you might not have the input, but it's 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 meaning that they they still have game and they they're not you know they don't feel like or they're not seen as just like hogging the seat because they're yeah. having competition but it's just like well yeah. if you want the seat come and come and come and come and run for it which yeah is well it's like it's it's like the cardinal of ambition who is a donish person vivian dakota for they've yes they've said several times like i'm the cardinal of ambition if i didn't have people coming for my seat i would be very concerned because it would mean that the ambition the ambition ambition assembly aren't being very ambitious <laughs> Yeah. which yeah. would be contradictory uh, in the most extreme ways. So yeah. well, that, that's that's the, that's there's why. one thing about hats. Yeah, you do have, I'm saying you have to like let everyone go, but not in the sense of, oh yeah, we're, we're handing out participation trophies. I mean, like, yeah, you, you, if you want to, if you want to get it, go get it, but you've got to do the work to got it. Go get it. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, that's one thing I do like is when people, especially cause it, cause it actually translates out of game as well. Sometimes you see on the forums and people start complaining and they're like, Oh yeah, well this and they're just like then some some somebody just shuts it all down by saying, "Well, you could always run yourself." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like when we, you know, um, I've had people complain about uh, high guard military tactics, which is f funny because I'm like, we go to a place, we stop, and then we stay there, and nothing gets past us or through us. That's how we work. Um, and then we have the other, we have the Unconquered, which look like, you know, Faramir and, and Boromir and stuff like that, who then do the running around and shooting people just to annoy yeah. everyone. Yeah. Um, but when people have come and complained to me about that, I'm like, have you considered being a general? Yeah. Have you considered doing that? Because then you can say in the military council, hey, high guard, be better. Which, yeah. by the way, you can't say because we are better. <laughs> good luck yeah but also like saying that that's not a that's not a uh that's not an fu oh yeah you know what you run that that's literally 
a good thing to say to someone because it it, it yeah. makes them go and do it because yeah. I, i'm a little bit with, with my character currently i'm just like well, i don't know if I'll really, I, I don't know if general shit really a- appeals to me but i'm like I, I need to, I need to think of something to to go for, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just like I, I'll 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 find something to push because otherwise you're just like because we we've done the whole. Oh, I've I've done my test of metal. Robin hasn't finished hers yet. Um, but I've I so I've I finished my, mine, and now we're all like I'm still sitting here. It's like how long was the last event ago? And I'm still I'm not entirely sure what I want to what I want to do. One thing that really interests me, I don't know if you know much of, about this, but is the um. Is the throne guard positions because I don't know what so what's the deal with them now there isn't a there isn't a throne. So um the throne guards are not they are not sworn to protect a person, they are sworn to protect the seat. So whoever sits in that seat, they protect. Yeah. Um so they're not disbanded, they're still currently there. We are still paying for them to exist. Yeah. Um and uh currently uh the head of that is in dawn um and so when a throne is elected the throne guard will become more active than they are currently yeah um and that game can apparently be very very exciting yeah because i do yeah i'll probably i'll because obviously i want to i want to discover about it in character as well but it's it's something that is the one because it was actually when we were talking to uh we we're talking to maz who used to be in dawn yeah. and yeah her character was captain of the throne guard and when she was talking about it, i'm like i'm like yeah i don't know about general but i'm like that is that is way up godric street godric would love to just be that person to have someone be like go kill that person wait no stop stand on one leg jump up and down come, come <laughs> here say hello to them give them a kiss okay now come yeah, back that, like, that, that is godric. that's that's godric all over i don't know if godric's that ready to be like we need to send this army here. But he would be he would be great at defending someone with his life. Remember, <laughs> there was a mention of a Dornish Kimble. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, no, I, I just great. want to kick ass and look good doing it. That's all I want to do. <laughs> that's, that's all I want. And, in and trust me, when it comes to thrones, you know there will be foreign nations that will want to tip the scales, and they'll send somebody with a certain set of skills to deal with that. And yeah, also, I, you know. The last throne that we had used to go out into the battlefield. Yeah, God, that was, yeah. I mean, that would, how how cool would that be if you were like a, a, a throne scar? I mean, that, that that's again, it's because we haven't got one now. But it's, uh, that's something that's that's something I've sort of got my eye on. Um, I would say too, it would be stressful because every single orc, I think, every single orc archer would probably be chucking each other thrones, being like, "Get them! <laughs> if you if you get that one, everyone will I'm, run away." I'm already the bane of archers, so like. <laughs> Just the bane of the bane. Sounds like you've already got that for the interview. Then I am the bane of archers. I am the bane. Will never be shot. The bane of the of the archers. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, Where you I'm... cork them every time? You're like, come on, then. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the point you were talking about, like priests on the battlefield before, like the, the poor priests and, and mages on the battlefield, uh, because I'm usually up front, and people panic about archers, and every time I'm like. What are they gonna do? It's 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 one archer, and I've got I'm wearing a, a suit of metal. What the hell are they gonna do? And the port the port mage in the back's like, oh, the... actually they can do quite a lot. <laughs> I don't have a suit I'm of very metal. scared right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you uh, are you doing any uh, more player events before next year or? So yes, uh, I have an event uh, that is based in Highgard. It's going to take place in Bath. It's called History and Virtue, and it takes place in the Roman Baths. It is, oh, it's yeah. It, it, the, um, I, I've I've had that one on my uh, wish list, so it looks like it's because uh, I've had a couple of people say, "Oh yeah, that one." No. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm going to that because the last time I went to that, I got all the evidence I needed. Uh, to help execute someone so uh yeah. people tend to talk yeah and so, that's fun for me yeah so hopefully two for two then you know <laughs> oh yeah i'm going in there with that aim but you never know there might not be a heretic this time there might just yeah. be all very virtuous people in which case i'll feel very happy yeah. um yeah, we'll see what happens <laughs> it's, it's a very exciting event i'm very excited about being there um and also like what I like is that your character changes. Like that's the whole point of this is that your character yeah. does change yeah. and develop. Development, and yeah. <laughs> um, and with me, um, the last time I was there, I was very reactive as a person, whereas now I'm a little bit more in control of what I want and where I want and all those things as Silas. And yeah. so it'll be a very interesting 
to see the change. Yeah, and, I, like, yeah, it's 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 funny, isn't it? Because I, I I'm getting that kind of feeling as well. Next, I'm not anywhere near as like I don't know if I was that anxious really about about doing it all anyway at the beginning of the year, but I was. yeah, I, <laughs> I, I I feel like it, when we start, like you know, when it all kicks off again next season. Not that I'm saying, oh, people will come to me, but yeah, people will know my character because no, they've been around, yeah. and they're just like, oh yeah, actually, yeah, well, I'll come talk to you about this instead of being a brand new face, a brand new character, and then be like, oh, I better like just kick up a load of shit and see what sticks, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you have yeah. to do that at the beginning, um, but as 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 the character grows and as as your reputation grows, especially, you know, there's less sort of kicking the dirt to see what comes up. Mm -hmm. um, not that that not that you don't ever stop doing that though because there's again there's three thousand people in that field yeah. you're going to be constantly coming across new people all the time and you're going to be constantly going my name is silas i do this <laughs> yeah i know i know it's, yeah i'd say that like three thousand people like kyle honestly like every time like I have, we have so many friends that lap that we don't have any interactions with on the field so yeah I, I i was about to say to you oh yeah i can't wait to find you on the field but unless you actually have a reason to find to find someone you just and, totally... and after this, I think I'm scared of you. So <laughs> I don't know. So many people, so many people <laughs> joke about being scared of Silas. But when I tell you I am pestered by a group of changelings who are all friends with me, but they've all become friends with me through LARP and through interacting with Silas, they just never take me seriously because they know what Silas can be like sometimes. So they just walk waltz up and just go. Are you okay? I'm just like, <laughs> I mean, changelings are superior, so you know. Yeah, yeah, we're just... We're oh, just... There's that, there's it's that not... changeling ego again. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not our fault, we're just Try better than everyone. It's, it's, we're not so bad people. help it. <laughs> are you? It's, it's not our fault. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, that that's the great thing about playing that type of because there are that there are obviously the people that play it serious or play it serious but play, yeah play that that side of it but you can you can totally just be like oh yeah you know hiya. <laughs> and just absolutely have a laugh and yeah and and that's where i freak people out the most i think is when silas actually decides to have a holiday people are not prepared for silas to have a holiday because my version of fun is playing chess but then also drinking a lot whilst playing the chess because chess is also mentioned in the High Guard brief. It's one of the oh, games. That you play. Yeah, yeah. It's and I luckily I quite enjoy playing chess. Terrible at it, but I quite enjoy it. So sometimes you might find me in the Navarre in the Navarre camp, surrounded by a lot of drug people, with me going, and I've lost again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll have, we'll have to we'll have to come find you. I'll have to. Sh sh it's about, but well, if Godric ever finds out, that's how you become an exemplar. Is by uh in inquisitors coming and in, and in, in checking you out i'll probably be like i don't know posing in front of silas or something and actually hercules knowledge. style in front of him someone wants to be dedicated to wisdom they came to me uh to ask me and i literally turned around to them i was like everyone else might just dedicate you because you've asked i was like but not me you have to come with me to come to me with examples of why I should dedicate you to wisdom. Sounds Don't, like a challenge. And I gave him a challenge. And yes. he, uh, they've spent like two, they've now spent two sort of things collecting info and coming back to me going, is this enough? Is this enough? Is this enough? That's and I'm just going, okay, I think now is the time where I'll probably dedicate them. But that was fun game to turn around and be like, no, I'm not just going to dedicate you. I'm a serious priest. We do, we do this serious. <laughs> I'm serious priest. You want to be part of wisdom? Fine. Prove to me that you are actually practicing wisdom and you're not just getting dedicated because you fancy it. You know, God, and that's yeah. fun. Yeah, there's there's so there's so much this we've been talking a while and there's there's still so much that I'm like, like, like I know I'm I could talk about this for hours. Yeah, well we'll, we'll have to we'll we'll have, we'll have to get you on we'll have to get you on again. Uh, it's been or it's been it, well we will we'll get you on again because there was there was a few things that we didn't I didn't even get around to asking you. Yeah. Uh, you have to, yeah we'll c come on again if you'll if you'll uh, if you'll allow it. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, we'll and um, we'll have to uh, uh, yeah try and find try and find you on the field. But if not. Um, we'll get you back on and we'll talk more uh, we'll talk more about inquisitions and it's okay up. it's okay i've definitely been watching you from afar on the donish field for unrelated reasons <laughs> wait 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 what? you or silas you silence because that's, that's important that's even worse <laughs> <laughs> well yeah well we, we'll probably have to get you on at the end of next next season then we'll have to do our own inquisition and what the hell happened <laughs> what the hell happened Right, thank you, thank you very much for coming on, Carl. We'll say goodbye to the podcast. Had a great Bye. time. Bye. See you later, everyone. Bye.
Hey, thanks for stopping by. If you enjoyed this episode, uh, make sure you subscribe, make sure you thumbs up, uh, leave us a comment down below if you have any questions regarding LARPing, Empire LARP, or High Guard. Make sure you check out some of our other videos that we've done with some excellent LARPers and role players. See you next time. Bye.